afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Hello. Hello. You alright? Is everyone else alright? Yeah. Gather round to see the most amazing display of axe racing you're going to see at Tree Fest. We're going to start our display with the chainsaws, show what they're, what they're going to make for the crowd. They've been a club sponsor for three or four years now. Firewood, yeah, we got some firewood. What about you, Danny? A mess. A mess. Like your hair. There we are, we've got three little archbishop's chairs. And I do believe. What's the matter, Danny? <laughs> You'll laugh even louder in a minute because Danny is an ex tree surgeon. We're going to give these away to the kids that shout the loudest and get the attention of the Sawyers. Well done, boys. Well done, all the Sawyers. We're trying to find out who's the fastest chainsaw operator. One, two, three. So it's one cut down and one cut up within four inches of the timber. It's a close race for the team. Oh, Danny's got it. This isn't complete. There's a bit missing off the top. A bit like you, Bob, a bit missing off the top. <laughs> Bob thinks he can beat Danny with a faster saw. This is a still 660 modified with a racing moped exhaust. <laughs> it's the biggest um, saw that Husqvarna actually do themselves. It's the Husqvarna 3120, but Husqvarna, when they used to sponsor us, they took it back in-house, they um, port and polished the pistons, they then put a new ECU into the, into the engine. What's an ECU? Basically, it's this little blue box here, controls all of the revs, um, and how basically how fast it all goes, and actually controls it, actually makes it a lot faster. Okay, so it's a, it's a completely modified... Uh, basically, yeah, yeah, and that's where we put the big racing can on the side of it and um, that's why it goes pretty pretty fast now. So that enables like more exhaust, uh, a gas to escape, yeah, is it? and exactly. that gives it more to yeah, more. Yeah, and then it can just, like you said, fully race spec it, and as you can see, it's three times faster than a normal chainsaw that we use. And our, like I said, our normal chainsaws that we use are proper forestry fed saws that you'd be using on 18, 20 inch timber every day. So um, as you can see, that's why it's a lot faster. So we're gonna race the two modified saws, but the Husqvarna is slightly more modified it's modified by us by Husqvarna themselves in the factory. So we are hoping that Danny can do three rings to Bob's two. So it is on three. One, two, three. Main big competition one in North Wales at St Asif at the Woodfest. One at the Royal Welsh Show and we've got one next week in Knighton. Um, and that is about all the competitions that there are. So you just got to go to where you see us, see one of the lads and see how close you are to a training, training camp. You've got to turn that chainsaw off. Don't you know the rules? Put the saw on the floor. <laughs> Go and stand over there by those wonderful people. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think is going to win the race, guys? Danny. Danny. On three. One, two, three. So Danny's running across, starting to saw in between his legs. He's going to have to go with some. Oh, it's going to be close. Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> It's a huge sport in Europe now, it's growing really fast over there and we went out to a competition last autumn um, in Switzerland, um, did very well, um, some of us had some wins, some of us didn't, so <laughs> as you could tell, Glenn got a win and I didn't, um, Danny got a DQ, no, you got a DQ. <laughs> there they use poplar which is, some of it is exactly the same as we use but they also use white pine. Um, which is a little bit softer than the poplar we're using, um, but we just don't have pine in this country as clean and you know, without knots as they do over there. 
um, but it's very, very similar in Europe. So what we're doing is we're replicating many years ago, hundreds of years ago in the wood, how the old woodsman would work with the axes cut it. Go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Me and my son and another couple went over to Australia mainly for a holiday, um, but that's the home of wood shopping really in Australia. Um, and they got very hard to move there. We were, we were miles out from any prize money whatsoever. They know how to cut hardwood, and we didn't. After we'd been there for three or four weeks, you get to know how to cut the hardwood. It's just a completely different style of cutting to what we do. It's a lot more stamina based rather than hitting it hard. They hit it, you know, a lot longer. The race takes longer. A lot more stamina. I don't think Danny Hope's going to be long. What about Rob Wilding? Has he got a little bit of wood to cut? It's going to be a close race, I think. Give him a cheer. We're not going to be long. Keep cutting. One more. By the look of it, Rob has damaged his axe. That's not very good because the axes are up to the value of £400, especially imported from Australia and New Zealand. You get hit with import duty, it's terrible, that's just a wonderful country we live in. <laughs> but um, yeah, and that is, I don't know if it will do it, but it will take the hairs off your arm. Yeah. Yeah, and they're sort of what they ground on then, sort of like a trommel or something just like that? Just stones. Just stones, is it? Probably stones, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. they're sharp. Yeah. That's a China, it's called the China, because it's a reproduction made in China. Yeah. So that'd be 200. Yeah. And that'd be 400. Yeah, that's a heavier one. And you can tell also by the back end of yeah. it as well. If you look there, there's a lot more work done into this one mm. than that one. But they, these are very good value for money. Yeah. All the boys out here pretty much today were using these China axes. Yeah. And they really do pop it because they got a degree of 16 and a half degrees. Yeah. So they, they they cut the wood and they pop it. Right. And when it pops out, obviously you you're shifting some timber there. Yeah. It's got more mass in the head as well. That's yeah. Cool, isn't it? Yeah. Some sometimes you pick a log, and it's luck of the draw. You, you may have knots in the log. Even a knot the size of your little finger will damage these axes. Which means Bob, our wonderful coach, has to regrind them. But every time you regrind your axe, it becomes smaller. And as the axe becomes smaller, you cut less wood. So Alex is nearly halfway through his log. Glenn's putting big, powerful hits in. Two hits on each side, and a massive chip pops out of the log. Who's it going to be? Charlie's rounding to his second side. Glenn won't be far behind. How come you followed in your, your dad's footsteps? Well, I don't know. So I've been growing up with it since I was about three or four, so sort of always known it and always wanted to have a go and then just give it a go one day and fell in love with it and that's where I am today, beating the old man. <laughs> Come on boys, it's going to be a good race this. Glenn's round. Charlie's right to... Come on Alex, keep cutting, you're doing a great when job When he goes there. first, actually he was about four. And mind you, it was just a little tiny coal breaker. Um, so you could hit yourself all day with it, you wouldn't cut yourself, but it was put a short handle in it just so he could swing it and get used to the feel of it because I always wanted him to, to take up wood chopping and follow me on and, and he did, he loved it. All, all the wood that we cut today goes home and is used by us for firewood or is sold to the locals at home for cheap firewood. Anybody who starts <clears throat> we supply them, we don't give them an axe but we give them an axe to use. The club, this, this club will supply them will the safety chain mail to put on their feet and we'll give, give them all the tuition they could possibly need um, in return for splitting a little bit of firewood, basically. <laughs> and, that, and that is it. it. There's no cost to to any young axeman that starts. They buy an axe when they're ready. When they're committed to the sport and they think they want their own axe, that's when they buy one. Um, and there's always axemen like myself, like Rob, who's damaged an axe. It's therefore a little bit smaller, and you might sell that one cheaper and buy a new one to replace it. And that's where the people coming into the sport get cheaper axes at the bottom. Thanks, Matt. <laughs>